This is Business Inspires, a monthly podcast of the Tri-Village Chamber Partnership. To run a successful business, you need resources, valuable connections, and community recognition. Business Inspires will provide you with the tools, resources, and examples to inspire you to create the business you're envisioning. Here's Michelle Wilson, Executive Director of the Tri-Village Chamber Partnership. Hi, this is Michelle Wilson. I'm the Executive Director with the Tri-Village Chamber Partnership, and you're listening to Business Inspires. And today I'm very excited to have my friend Brian Cheek with me. Brian is the Executive Director of Destination Grandview. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Happy to be here. So this is a little different because we're typically talking to entrepreneurs who have started a business from the ground up and we talk about, you know, what got them there and their passion. So um, I decided we're just going to talk about me today. Okay, no, I'm joking. Great. We're going to talk all about you and um, and your your background and, and how you did get to Destination Grandview and, and where you'd like to see it go. We'll get there eventually. So sure. um, I would love to know where you came from and um, would you grow up here in Columbus Sure. I grew up in Northwest Ohio in a small town called St. Henry, Ohio. Uh, it's about two hour drive from here. And I moved here for college. I started at Columbus State because I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Did about a year and a half there and then decided I wanted to go continue and get a four year degree. After about six major changes, I ended up <laughs> with a communications degree from Ohio Dominican. Okay, great. So um, did communications. So, did, I mean, where did that leave you? I mean, did you, did you think I want to do this in a specific industry or no, I you sort just kind of had open options? I sort of picked the major because it was so open okay. and knowing my personality yeah. that I wanted the flexibility to change throughout my career path, which I have. And um, the degree did give me that flexibility. Okay. So you, you changed a few times. Um, what did you think you wanted to do when you were younger and starting out? Uh, in first grade, I wanted to be an artist. Okay. My parents save everything, and I just found this piece of paper that says <laughs> I was going to be an artist and my work would be shown in Chicago. Wow, so that's that very specific first for a grade, first grader. Yes. <laughs> so that's what I originally, I guess, wanted to be because I know you asked that question at each episode. But yes. uh, that's what I started out. Um, when I graduated from college, though, I really wasn't sure, and I went into sales because my background, I had worked through college, putting myself through college, working retail jobs um, okay. throughout Columbus and as well as restaurant jobs and all those um, types of service industry jobs. So I knew that I wanted to kind of hone those skills into a sales role. Got it. And so that was the first job out of college. I actually worked for a small computer company right down the road here on Dublin Road oh. called Retrobox. Oh, I remember and, Retrobox. Yeah. And yeah. I did some international development for them. Okay. And then um, changed careers again, went back to retail and then went back into corporate sales again at the Columbus Dispatch. And okay. there I decided that I would um, didn't want to do sales anymore and I wanted to do something really community-minded and go into the nonprofit world. Okay. And was lucky enough to get into Experience Columbus, which yes. then started my path down tourism. So as you can see, the communications degree did help me kind of bounce <laughs> around a little bit, but um, found my really my setting in working for a nonprofit specific to Columbus area. Great. And of course, I also worked at Experience Columbus, and we have a lot of friends in common. Yes. Um, and that place has really um, been pivotal in so many people's lives and, and perhaps changing their career paths because they get there and they realize that there's there's so much about this city that's undiscovered and um, that's really wonderful. And it, it it's been it's been a it's been a great thing for me because it did get me to where I am with the chamber as well. Absolutely, but, um, I agree. But certainly, you know, it's I, you didn't stay at Experience Columbus. You had a couple of other experiences in between there and where you are now. So what Correct. were those? So um, from Experience Columbus, I went to the Wexner Center of the Arts okay. for a little while and did some sponsorship and development and membership there. And then I went to the Ohio History Connection and did marketing for that statewide organization. So they have 50 plus history sites throughout the state. Okay. Um, so that was great because then I was on the other side of the tourism world. I was on the attraction side. I understood how a museum worked, um, their stress points, you know, being low on staff often and mm -hmm. how do you get things done or how do you market to a wide variety of um, audiences throughout the state. Sure. Um, so some great marketing exposure there too. So I was um, pretty content there until this job opened up at Destination Grandview, um, which was a great opportunity, um, one that doesn't come along very often. And so I felt like I could take everything I had learned in membership and tourism sales at Experience Columbus, as well as the everything I learned on the attraction side of things into this role and take my tourism skills even further. So what was it that was so um, desirable about this position? I mean, besides all of the experience that you could bring to it, but it's it's a small, growing organization. You came in when um, it was 
they were really trying to take the next step, take take Destination Gravy to the next level and give it more exposure. So, Well, first and foremost, I loved Grandview. So okay. I thought anything that I had done in my past, if I followed my passion, um, it was going to be successful, I felt like. It was going to be a win-win for myself and the organization. So right away, I always loved Grandview I, for a variety of reasons. You know, I came over here, studied at Stoffs in college, um, hung out here all the time in college, a lot of first dates here in college at Filio <laughs> and places along the <laughs> avenue there. Um, so that's really, first and foremost, I was like, oh, that's a great area and that should be on the map for tourism. They should be getting some of the tourism dollars. Um, and with the addition of the second hotel and the Grand Event Center in the Grand View Yard, I knew that they were positioning themselves to um, foray into that market. Absolutely. And so you mentioned, going back to the very beginning of, of your answer, you mentioned um, bringing your passion to something. What What is your passion, if you could identify it in a couple of words? So as far back as college, when I moved to Columbus, I just fell in love with everything local. And okay. it wasn't that easy then to find things local. It was sort of, um, you know, now it's just everywhere. Sure. Everything's local. Right. We're hyper local. Um, but at the time, you know, in the mid nineties there, the local thing was sort of there, but wasn't celebrated as much. And so one of my first jobs in college was actually at the Ohio designer craftsman, a show of hands, which mm -hmm. was at Lane Avenue shopping center up Arlington. And I really learned how to promote those local artists. And I saw the value in what they were doing. And then I saw the value in the service that we were providing to the community of exposing them to this great artwork being created by people in Ohio. So I've always sort of had that in me. And so that's what really brought me um, into wanting to wanting this position even more because it's what something I've always done is celebrated local. And this was a way to do it in a great community. Well, that's, that's awesome. So what are the differences with uh, Destination Grandview when you first started and now a couple years down the road? What have you done to grow the organization? Okay. So um, a couple of things that I did right off the bat was to sort of start packaging um, things in the area. So, you know, we have great microbreweries and tap rooms. So packaging those, but also packaging them in a way so that a visitor coming into the hotel would be able to find them in an easy manner. So we have some uh, brochure cards at the hotels um, promoting those bars and breweries and restaurants and things with the distance from the hotel so okay. that we really take that sort of proximity thing out of it. So people realize that there's this great neighborhood um, you know, within a mile, within walking distance from their hotel. So that was one thing we did right off the bat was package things for the immediate visitor coming in the door, your sort of leisure traveler, or business traveler. Sure. And proximity. It, it, I, I know you kind of took that, that piece out of it to not be intimidating to the visitor, but um, proximity is a huge deal uh, for the Grandview area specifically because the proximity to downtown Columbus, to the art, Short North Arts District, to the Arena District is amazing. I mean, we uh, we are positioned, Grandview is positioned um, beautifully to draw some of those visitors in from even downtown and conventions that are taking place there. Is that accurate? Absolutely. Every Every promotion that we do that's a national promotion, we make sure that we use just those places in all of our advertisements. So we always say Ohio State, downtown, the Arena District, um, and the Short North Arts District, of course. So we always try to position ourselves um, in a way that people can link us to those destinations that they might be coming in for, that there's this great neighborhood right next door. Absolutely. Or to stay in and then visit those neighborhoods right. as well. Yeah, good. So um – what do you do to market the area? What I mean, what are your primary initiatives? Grandview, the Grandview area is not huge. Sure. And so thinking um, that it could really be a destination might be difficult for some people who are somewhat familiar with the area. Like, you know, what am I going to, what am I going to do in Grandview? So um, when starting, I'm trying to find out, I've been in the position about a year, year and a half now. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I've been doing since I started is to try to find the right markets for us um, and trying to keep our feet in all those markets and try to figure out what is the fit? Where does Grandview fit? Um, and so some of the markets that we've looked at doing are weddings, for instance, mm -hmm. which I love that market for the entire neighborhood because you can do everything from get your invitations at Peabody Paper on Grandview Avenue. You could have a great rehearsal dinner at the Avenue Steak Restaurant. Um, you could have a re uh, bachelorette party down at Hoffer House, and then you could stay at the hotel and obviously have your wedding at the Grand Event Center. So it really – a wedding has the most economic impact for the entire area. Absolutely. And that's one market I went after right away because I felt like that was one that would speak to so many people and affect us all in a positive manner. 
And then also uh, tour bus market. That's another mm-hmm. market that I've always been involved in way back since Experience Columbus. So um, that market we go after. And typically that one, we've done a lot of partnerships. I'm all about partnerships. And um, locally, I work still with closely with Experience Columbus and other CVBs on trying to attract that bus market here. Um, we're not necessarily going to get them to always stay overnight here, but we will get them through to ha- perhaps stop at Cream and Nuts, uh, do a tour at Watershed Distillery, those types of things. So um, we're always keeping our um, keeping them in our vision. And then the other markets would be, of course, your leisure traveler, mm-hmm. which we reach out a lot, I feel, through social media. We have a really strong Instagram presence of over 13,000 followers on just Instagram and growing. So I think we reach a lot of the leisure travelers through those, through our social media efforts. And then meeting and event planners with the Grand Event Center. Um, it's a great venue for those conferences and conventions. But also another thing that I recently completed was a event center document. So I packaged all of the great event spaces in Grandview. And there are some really great ones that I don't think a lot of people were even aware of that you could maybe rent this restaurant out or <laughs> this museum has a downstairs conference center that you can rent out. So we packaged all those details that are specific to meeting planners that they want to know about um, how many rounds will fit in the room, those kind of details sure. onto one document. And then um, we've pushed that out through social media as well. And it's also downloadable on our website. It is downloadable. That yes. was going to be my next question. Absolutely. So good. And then if you need specific information about any of those venues, I have an entire database now of all those details, like if they accept outside caterers, that type of thing. So you can always reach out to me directly and I'll help you with that. Great. I know going back to my uh, many, many years ago at Experience Columbus, uh, we attended, I was with, with the bus market. So, um, we attended trade shows, you know, to try to educate people on everything Columbus had to offer. Is that, um, something you you're doing but on on a smaller level sure absolutely um back to partnerships so locally i am working with experience columbus and other cvbs but on a statewide effort we have a program called ohio has it which is a co-op of cvbs and attractions that went together to focus on the bus market as a state so we co-op our dollars together so that we can send an attendee to those conferences throughout the country um, so that we're all represented at those conferences. Nice. When we come back, those leads are shared. Had to be more affordable to do it that way. Absolutely. Yeah. And then another example of trade shows, um, I will attend small market meetings once a year. That is one show that I've budgeted for because I think that makes sense for Grandview sure. in particular. So what about I'm tr- weddings? Is, trying is, that is there something out there for – we are besides hope, wedding shows, I guess. I haven't done any wedding shows yet. Okay. Um, being a CVB, it's a little tricky, right? Um, because you're trying to bring in a destination, and they tend to want those destinations, all their attractions, to attend individually. Right. So that's been oh, a little okay. tricky for me to attend or to wrap my head around how we're going to attend that market. But I do advertising through um, some wedding publications, absolutely, right. and we share those leads with our partners um, that are par- participating in a wedding program that I'm doing right now Great. towards that market. So you're the only paid staff member. Correct. So you wear a lot of hats. I do. And um, talk about a typical day. What, maybe we should start with telling the, the listening audience, what is a destination marketing organization? What what do you do? Sure. Well, Destiny, Destination Grandview's mission is to showcase the best of greater Grandview Heights to visitors in a nutshell. Okay. So we do that in a variety of ways that I discussed previously. Right. Um, on a day-to-day basis, I do have help with our social media through Cheryl Harrison at Speech Bubble. She's she does, great. yes, she does a phenomenal job with our social media. So I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> so although I am a person of one, she does do a lot of the work as far as social media right. efforts go. And okay. that's been really great. But on a day-to-day basis, I'm trying to focus on things on those markets individually. So I try to break my day up on, okay, today we've got to work on promotions for the wedding season because if it's that mm-hmm. time of the year or if it's planning season for tour bus operators, uh, we'll look at that market and then also with meeting and event um, planners. So there really is a cadence once I got into this for about a year okay. of when the shows fall, when they're planning. And so I've set my marketing calendar according to that. Great. But you're also having to do research on – Trends, what's going on with other uh, community CVBs around the, I say CVBs, um, <laughs> but uh, destination marketing organizations around the, the region and what they're doing. So, absolutely. And again, um, one of the groups that I'm a partner with is the Ohio Travel Association. Um, they do some great workshops and those types of things. I attend an annual conference there to stay on top of trends. Um, some of the best trend ideas, though, at those conferences come from networking with my peers. And we are, 
Um, the thing about the tourism world, and I'm sure you can attest to this, is it's a really close knit community. Mm-hmm. Um, there, we're not super competitive. We know that we're all in this together, and if we work together, um, we'll all benefit from that outcome of working together. I do remember that, and and loving that um, we openly shared successes and challenges, and we all learned from that and embraced um, partnerships, as as you've alluded to a couple of times. That oh my gosh, it helps so much if you can plan a bus trip with a, a partner organization because maybe you have a half day's worth of something to do um, f- for 55 passengers on a bus, but you know, then you can partner with somebody else, but also just, as I said, sharing successes and challenges and learning from those and making your organization better. I meet every other month with CADA, which is the Capital Area mm-hmm. Tourism Association, and that is made up of executive directors in the immediate Columbus area. So Dublin, Hilliard, Gahanna, we're all there and we discuss um, some of those trends and topics and um, judicial things that we might be interested sure. in. Great. So are there any um, new things on the horizon that you can even share with us of uh, things that are coming to the area or things to look forward to or new packages? Or- oh, I think in Grandview specific, I think an area to watch would be Goodale. Um, I think we've seen some interesting businesses coming in there. Um, you know, There's a distillery going in along there. Um, when is that set to open? Do you know? Uh, ish. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. No, I don't I, know that. That good. You're right. Good ale has been transformed already so much, and okay. there's so much more of it to to come. Right. And I I have met with that distillery. I just okay. don't know their start date, but I can tell from their Instagram they're moving pretty rapidly. Yeah. So we're excited about that. But I do think good. um Good Ale is going to just continue to expand. Um, Grandview Crossing, which will be at Dublin Road and Grandview mm-hmm. Avenue, I think is really exciting to watch as well. Um, there is a proposed hotel going in there too. And then across from the Grandview Yard, across from the Grandview Grand Event Center, um, there's about 10 acres of land being developed there too. So there's a lot of development coming in into the area. Um, so that we're excited about that. Is the hotel in Grandview Crossing that's proposed uh, set to be on the Grandview side of that property? I know it's kind of split between Columbus and Grandview. The initial article I read said, yes, it would fall on the oh, Grandview that's part. That's great for you. Yes, that that's is great news. That's really exciting yes. for the whole area, but certainly Absolutely. for Destination Grandview. Yeah, we'd... Because funding from Destination Grandview, people should know, is primarily generated by bed tax revenue. Correct? That's correct. Okay. So another hotel would certainly mean added budget. And- Absolutely. And then those um, revenues that come in from the hotel bed tax don't entirely go to me. They're also shared with um, organizations like the Parks and Rec Department and help right. with our parks stability and growth. Right. So. But that's that's exciting. Yeah, very exciting. You know, growing up in this area, um, I have said many, many times that was where you sit with the Grand Event Center and um, the hotels around there and the Grandview Yard specifically. It was it was a grocery store you know, warehousing right, facility. Right. And who would have thought that it is what it is today with this beautiful development and hotels and an event center and more to come. So it's really exciting to see the changes. And absolutely. Uh, you're, you're there in the middle of it every day. Right. Absolutely. It's a great area to be in. Um, lots of growth going on down there. I think you'll hear some announcements of other things coming down there too soon. I hope so. That's yes. exciting. Yes. It's, it's, it was started out as a 15 year project. I don't know how much that's been oh, really, expanded. I didn't it was that. Yeah, so um, we're about maybe eight, seven or eight years into that. So okay. I, I'm sure there's plenty more to yeah, come. That's exciting. Yeah, definitely. Good. So I think we're continuing to see growth in Grandview and some great new merchants coming in, and a lot of them are still the local flavor that people look for. Absolutely. There's a lot to do in Grandview. You have taken this organization to a new level, which Thank I know you. that that's what you were tasked with, but you're definitely the right person. We're so happy to have you um, promoting our area. Thank you. I appreciate that. And everyone has been so great to work with. Every merchant I've met with is really open and welcoming to providing me with their input and insight on what they see. And it, you know, part of it is just me educating them of where they fit into the tourism world. And I think that's it. I think it's education. You know, I think a lot of these people come to Grandview because they know it's vibrant. They know it's close to all of some, some major areas of downtown, um, or not downtown, but of Columbus. And, um, it, it's, it's clearly a great place to be, but educating them on working together and partnering and, and where they fit in, in the puzzle is, is so important. So I know you're doing a great job of that. And, um, we love with at the chamber working with you, of course, to promote our area. And I think it's a great partnership. So Absolutely. Thanks for all of your support. And thanks so much. We look forward to seeing Grandview continue to grow with all this new stuff coming and and uh, continuing to promote the area. Great. So. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for joining me. 
Thanks for subscribing, downloading, and listening to Business Inspires, a monthly podcast of the Tri-Village Chamber Partnership. Our innovative and active chamber is successful because of our smart and engaged members who cultivate our strong business community. With more than 60 years as an integral part of the Grandview, Upper Arlington, and Marble Cliff communities, the Tri-Village Chamber Partnership is dedicated to a single purpose, the success of the business community. You can find a link to our website in the podcast notes to learn more about the Tri-Village Chamber Partnership. For information about this podcast, to schedule a guest appearance, or to find out more about sponsoring this podcast, our contact information is in the podcast notes. Make sure you rate and review our podcast on iTunes. That helps us spread the word about Business Inspires. Circle270media.com.